fire, where and how did it start? <laughs> well, the, the fire started in the uh, uh, Big Lake area, uh, <clears throat> approximately uh, 60 miles east of uh, Arctic Red River, and they were started by lightning. The lightning came with a uh, cold front off the Beaufort Sea and uh, very, very strong winds. And just before the fires had started, about two weeks before, the uh, temperatures in the Inuvik area were uh, very warm and the uh, amount of moisture in the atmosphere, it's called relative humidity, was low. And so the forest was very, very dry when these fires uh, got started. And with the strong winds that came with the storm, they grew very, uh, to a large size uh, the first day. Yeah, how fast is the fire burning? Well, on that particular day, with the winds between 30 and 40 kilometers and the forest as dry as it was, uh, we estimate somewhere between 45 and 75 meters a minute. Now, uh, the uh, Firefighters can work at a rate of about five or so meters a minute on the ground. And if they have air tankers with them, perhaps 20 meters a minute. So as you can see, these fires are spreading faster than the, our firefighters could keep up with them. So it's out of control? They went under, out of control uh, that day, the 29th of June, and uh, the, as of today, which is uh, July the 10th, they're still burning under uh, out of control. How much has the fire burned since it first started? Well, that fire is uh, approximately 50,000 hectares as of today. What's the danger to, uh, to towns and trappers camps in the area? Well, there's no immediate danger to any of the towns. Uh, a very severe condition would have to persist for several weeks before Arctic Red River would be uh, in any danger and, and at the present time it's certainly not. However, for the people who are trapped in that area, the, uh, there was one uh, winter camp that was uh, located at the mouth of uh, Rat River, or Rat Lake River I think it's called, and uh, protection, protective measures were taken there to pre you know, prevent it from burning should the fire get closer. Right now the fire is about 10 kilometers from, uh, from that cabin. And the other uh, uh, structure that's uh, near the fire is the uh, Northwest uh, Tells uh, Grassy Repeater. And it's about seven and a half kilometers from the fire. And uh, protective measures have been taken on that one as well to prevent it from uh, being destroyed. <laughs> Is this the biggest fire you've ever seen? No, no. No, it's not the biggest fire I've seen, but it's certainly one of the bigger fires for this area. Uh, there has been, uh, you know, large fires uh, elsewhere in the territories uh, in the south that have been bigger than this one, but uh, this is certainly one of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. What type of equipment do you use to put out fires like this one? Well, uh, a large fire such as this one would require, and certainly with the kind of, of flames that uh, we saw when we were out to visit it, it requires uh, work with uh, air tankers or with a helicopter with a large bucket. And uh, the purpose of those equipment is to knock the flames down so the ground firefighters can follow uh, in behind with their uh, pumps and hoses or, or with hand tools and that would be uh, basically the way we would uh, fight these fires when, uh, as soon as the uh, conditions uh, permit. Is it possible for a fire to cross a river? Yes, it is possible. Well, if it uh, has the kind of, uh, of spread and flames that the, uh, the fires had on the day they got started, the, what happens, the uh, burning uh, branches or uh, cones, needles, and what have you get drawn up into the smoke column and then they fall out perhaps a half a mile ahead of the fire, like uh, across the Mackenzie, they would have to do that and it's, and uh, 
I've seen where it's crossed a lake that wide, so, uh, uh, and it's done by that way. It just simply uh, lifts the, the, the burning cones and, uh, and needles, and it goes up into the smoke column, and then it showers it out as a shower of, uh, of ash, and if some of that is still burning, it'll start a new fire across a river, even as wide as the Mackenzie, and new fires start from there. The cloud of smoke that you uh, saw while the, uh, the, the, the flat part of it was at 8,000 feet and then the big white uh, top cloud was to 12,000 feet and that was caused by the fire. So it gives you some kind of an idea of how hot it was burning uh, in the forest. You mentioned that the briefing of the fire is out of control and equipment is not big enough to put out the fire and that all we can do is worry about it. Is this uh, nature doing its part? That part, yes. Uh, it, uh, it's the same kind of thing uh, when you have a tornado or if you have a bad flood. So in those two instances you protect human life and, and try to minimize damage to the property. And that's been our tactic up till now. And well, the weather is turning around. Uh, the fire uh, behavior is going to be considerably reduced here in the next few days. And that will give us the chance to uh, take advantage of the opening that nature's given us to uh, uh, stop the spread of this fire, at least in, in places where it's going, if it did start up again, to uh, you know, keep it to as small a size as possible would be our, our next step now. Uh, how long will it take for this forest to go back to uh, its normal? Well, from the kind of forest you, we see around us, uh, it'll take uh, probably a hundred years or so. But the the forest has really never really left. It just changes its its form. The uh, the black spruce and uh, store their cones in those little tufts at the tops of the trees. And there's many years supplies of cones there and lots of seed. And so when the fire uh, uh, burns these trees, the, uh, the cones open and the, and the seed is scattered. And germination will take place next spring. And the little seedlings will start their, their, their long, uh, uh, their long hundred year growth to become the trees that you see them now. So it's just really changed form. It, they never really left. Do you have anything more you'd like to say? Well, only to say that the uh, firefighting effort in this area has been uh, uh, very good. Uh, like I said, I come from Fort Smith and uh, uh, to help out here and uh, uh, the, the number of people have come forth to, uh, to volunteer their services on these fires has been very good and uh, from what I've seen, uh, uh, been very good uh, firefighting. So uh, uh, certainly uh, gives me heart that we'll be able to do a good job on the on the big one when uh, when the weather does allow us to get in there and, and do something. Thank you. You're welcome.